Alumilate white, it's kind of a misnomer. This is what it looks like, okay? And this is the hardener and this is the resin. And when you put the two together, when you mix them up, in two and a half minutes, they turn perfectly stark white, okay? Um, then Alumilate clear looks like this, okay? They're both clear, all right? Um, and the Alumilite clear, you have seven and a half minutes to work with it, and then it has to get in the pot. And um, then you've got a 15 minute demold time on that one. And the Alumilite clear slow, you have 12 minutes to work with it, and it demolds in two and a half hours, okay? So that's why I chose this one that way we can get something out of the pot and you can actually see how it works, okay? So, with alumilite, as with, um, and it's a little different than other epoxies, like the West system, or if you have um, the other, like liquid diamonds, which I don't use, you have um, royal palm resin, you have to mix them by ounces, okay? Equal amounts by ounces. Alumilite has to be mixed in grams. And I get people all the time calling me and they'll say, hey, I mixed two ounces of this and two ounces of that. And I said, yeah, and it turned perfectly white. And they said, yes. And that's what's going to happen every time, okay? You have to mix alumilite by grams. And so I have a little gram scale here, okay? And what I did is I measured it out. Now, this is the mold that I'm using is this mold, okay? It's a 400 gram mold, all right? And how do you know that? is what I did is I just took water and poured it in it until it was just about full. Then I poured it out and measured it and it was 400 grams. <laughs> it's easy enough to do, all right? So um, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna mix up my A and my B, equal parts of A and B, okay? So I'm gonna need 200 of one and 200 of another, but I'm doing three colors. So I've gotta mix that again by A and B. So in this particular case, I'm looking at the, I'm, I'm using three colors. I'm using white, blue, and gray, okay, for this. So with the Alumilite white, I'm going to use 60 grams of, of white A and 63 grams of white B. Now why the difference? Because I said equal parts of it. When I pour this into here, okay, some of it is going to get stuck to this. So I figured roughly about three grams of it is gonna get stuck to it, and that's, I've measured it afterwards, and that's what, about, what it comes out to be, okay? You have to get it pretty precise with this stuff, all right? Now, <laughs> the reason I pour it like this, too, is because as soon as I pour this together and start mixing it, the two and a half minutes starts, okay? So I'm gonna need one other person up here to mix this, so that way we can get something going well. Now, the gray, the gray color is going to come into play. I'm going to take black, and all I'm going to do is take this off. Since it's gray, I don't need a whole lot of, of black, because black is a very, very dark color on this stuff. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the stick, just like this. And believe it or not, that little bit, just like that. Let me get my glasses on so I can make sure I have enough on there. Okay, I've got enough on here now, okay? So that's the black, and I'm gonna mix it in with the part B, which is, I'm sorry, the part A, which is a little thicker, and you'll watch this. And I'm doing this ahead of time, because if you try and mix it all up and try and get it in two and a half minutes, it doesn't work. I did a demo at, um, <laughs> down in Wildwood for the, um, what's, what's it, the Cape May Turners? Oh, that was wonderful. It was 85 degrees that night, it was August. They don't have air conditioning in there, okay? And we didn't even get it a minute into it and it started to harden. So as I'm pouring it out like this, it's actually hardening all the way down. So there's a big blob on the bottom and it's stuck to the, to the, the thing at the top and they auctioned that off at the end and I signed it. <laughs> so that's what that, so this is, yeah, <laughs> yep. So this is my gray, 
That's going to be ready to go there. So I'm going to mix that with that. Now the blue, okay, this is going to be my blue color. I really want this dark, dark blue. So if I put in one little drop of blue, it's not going to work. And I've already done this two or three times to work this out. And it's very, very formula, formulamatic. Formula, is that such a word? Yeah. By formula, okay. So I need, I need about, Illumilite tells you no more than 4% of the color. Otherwise, it's going to change. So if I mix this up, 4 grams of this is what I'm going to need to do this. So I put this on the scale. And you see how much I'm pouring in here. Wait a minute. Let me move this. That way you can see it on the other side. And what I want to do too is get, the, get this ready. Come on. There. Get that ready. So you're going to see how much four grams of this stuff is. One gram, two, You got three. There's four. It's it's a lot, okay. And so I'm going to mix this up and get this ready. And this is going to go with that one. Four grams. No, it's it's on the percent of what it, what I put in there. So. Um, I had six, yes. Did you, did you pre, preload the, the clear with 96 grams or 100? Uh, no, I took, I, I, yeah, like I said, this was, it's a 400 gram, so you, you need 135, 135, 135, and then 65 and 65. When I did it the first time and I did this, it came out, it wasn't, it didn't look anything like this, okay? It was way, way too light. The white was way overpowering. So I cut back a little bit, and you have to play with this um, a little bit so you get the formula right, because if you want the right colors. So I played with it a little bit um, and adjusted it. So I've got, you know, 60 grams of white, okay, instead of, instead of the, the 65, and I've cut back a little bit on the other colors. All right, so now, here we go. I'm going to need somebody to come up here. All right, thank you, John. Have what? All right, take waiver. this. Yeah, he signed a waiver. Yeah. And now uh, you can, you can. Ways. Okay. Put this back here. All right. Tell me what I'm doing. Mix. I'm pouring what into. You're what pouring into. this into here and mix it up real good. Now. You tell me when to start. All right. Who's gonna Who's gonna keep time on me? Somebody give me. Somebody give me some time. I need two and a half minutes tops. So give me, give me about a minute and a half and let me go. So you pour that in there and start mixing. Ready? Go. Okay. All right, so I'm mixing this. Yep, that's what I want. I want a nice gray. And you'll see this one, look, it's already turning white. Yep, that's okay. Mix this like this. 30 seconds. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start pouring this in here like that. <coughs> drop, drop. Thank you, John. Huh? It's going to, yep, it's going to go. One minute. Thank you. Oh, Good job, minute John. Now. Thank you, John. No, I'm, I'm not going to stir it. If I stir it, I'm going to have one, you know, oh, one I'm going to have one nasty color. So I'm just plopping it in here like this. And then I might give it a light, a slight, just swirl. 130. Thank you. 
Okay, and now if I want, I'll just give it one of these. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? Yep. Now this pressure pot, this is from Harbor Freight. All right, so what do we got time-wise? Good, did all right. Now I'm putting it in there slowly because I don't have, um, I don't have anything to deflect the air. And <laughs> one time I just whipped it and poof, it went all over the place. Uh, you live and learn. You, you make mistakes and it just happens. So I'm going to take this up to about 40 PSI, turn this off, disconnect this little guy. Okay, and I'm just going to, just going to leave this up here. Okay, so in, in about 15 minutes, we can take this out and you'll see, you know, what it is. Okay, hopefully, yes. The pressure pot is, when you mix up alumilite, you get zillions of bubbles. And I'll show you with the clear. You'll really be able to see that with the clear in a second, okay? Um, John, look at you, you sloppy guy. I was afraid, at least it didn't get the blue one here. But that's not too bad. We can wipe this right off. That's what I was afraid of. And you'll see the color on these, you'll see that start to get, you know, start to thicken up and darken up. Alumilate has to be done with a pressure pot. The, now, the white, right, and the exception with that is, if you're pouring, and they use alumilate white for uh, molds, for little tiny, um, little tiny um, jewelry parts and things like that, they make molds out of it, so you really don't, you don't have to worry about that because um, you're not concerned with, with air as much. When you mix up this stuff, and you'll see that right now, um, the alumilate white, you will really see um, how many zillions of bubbles you get with that, okay? Put this aside, put that over there. The pressure pushes it, it pushes it down and it makes them so, mi minute, yeah, so small you can't see them, okay? Microscopic I was trying to get out before, but it's the first week with the new mouth and it just doesn't work right. Do you need a mold release No. Um, with this, with the alumilite white, you don't. You'll see it'll just pop right out. With the Alumilite Clear, um, I'm going to need a little bit of mold release, and I'm going to put that in there now, and I'll show you. So, as I said before, this is a pressure pot from um, Harbor Freight, and what we've done is we've just went to um, Lowe's and Home Depot and just put on the little pieces like this so we could make it work right, okay? Put this down here. I built a little rack that I could put two layers in there, okay? And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a couple different things on this one. We're going to get tricky. So this is your 400 mold. Now, where'd you put... Uh, it's about 40 PSI. These are, good. These are good for 60. I never would put 60 in, in, a, in a Chinese pot, <laughs> okay? They make, they make good pot, like Binks makes a pot, they're about $300, um, but these work just fine if you, if you treat it nicely. And the first time you, make the, you, you put these on, what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of Vaseline on the, on the seal on this, um, and eventually it finds its own seal, okay? This one is about four years old, or sorry, this one's about four years old, um, and it doesn't leak at all, it's perfect. This one, is, it gives such a slight leak, and if I let it go overnight, it may drop from 40 PSI to 30 PSI. And I'm not worrying about that because by that time, it's already hardened up in there. Okay, whoever knows what's in here, don't say anything. Um, anybody have any idea what all this stuff is? No, 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 no. Shredded credit cards. Okay, the best use for them, right here. So, 
what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up some of the Illumilite Clear, put this in there. I'm going to mix up a little bit of blue dye because I just want a little bit of color to it, okay? So, in here, and what I'm also going to do too is, yes? Very carefully, right? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, there we go. All right, good. I'm sorry, what? No. If you draw a vacuum on it, <laughs> you're pulling air out. And it's going to harden up faster than you're going to be able to pull it out. Okay? And so you're going to, have, you're going to create a lot more bubbles in there. Um, so let me put this over here on the side. Get rid of that. Now, I have here... It's just anything. Uh, you can you can mix anything in there. It's just it's just kind of cool, you know, to mix up something like that. What I'm going to do here. Yeah. Okay. What I did also is. Where are you, Ray? Can I? Can you get a close up of this? I'll put them on here. What I did here, and I'm going to use a couple different molds. This is a um, a cigar label. It's okay? Okay. This is a, um, a cigar label, and what I did is I painted the background brown to make it look like something, like a cigar. This one is um, abalone shell, and what I do with the abalone shell is I send it to my guy who, where did I put that? I just had it here. Um, who cuts it with a laser, but not all the way through. It doesn't slice it all the way through. So it comes out looking like this, okay, all right, and you see all the lines in it. It's really kind of neat because what happens is when you put this on, it looks faceted as it goes around, but it's really not. Um, and I, I have people standing there all day long rubbing it and just like, like wow, that's, that's, you know. So what I did is I painted the tube black. Okay, just took a tube, I roughed it up, and I painted it black. How did I paint it black? I'm going to drive you crazy, right? I'm going to go back and forth. Um, so here's a tube that I scratched up, okay? I use a lot of, of these. You can get these at A.C. Moore, Michaels, Hobby Lobby, okay? They're um, a, you know, like a paint stick. They're really neat because they dry quickly. You just put it on there, and you can tell I never use this for painting. And all I'm going to do is just do this. Why can't you use a magic marker? Uh, magic marker, believe it or not, um, it doesn't cover as quickly. Okay, you can use a magic marker, but uh, also what happens with the magic marker is that since you roughed it up. And when you do this, Norm, will you get that phone, please? Jeez. <laughs> um, when you use a magic marker like that, it kind of leaves an indent, or it leaves an indent in the magic marker where this, it really doesn't. And then I just pull this back down like that. And in, you know, 30 seconds or a minute, it's done. So, and they come in a whole bunch of different colors. I like to use black because um, if there's a gap or something, you can't really see it, okay, because it'll just, um, you know, cover it up like that. So now we've painted this. I'm going to take my piece. Now, we've got these to where um, we made them slice them to where they fit exactly around here, okay, uh, which is really kind of nice. And the first time we did this, it took a lot of time to, to get this right. Um, the first few times we were we were going right through it, and then I had to take each individual piece and glue it, you know, and slide it on. It was such a pain. But now this is so nice because I can just peel this back a little bit, just like this. Peel this back, 
And now lay this on here like this. Yeah, I know. Never works when you have an audience. I got a little crooked, but that's okay. So now I'm going to take this, peel this off completely, and just wrap it over just like that. Okay? And I usually at home, I have a little piece of corian, and I'll lay this on there. <laughs> yeah, laugh, go ahead, corian. Um, and I just roll this back like that and get it nice and tight. Now, the edges like this on the top, and if you're doing labels or doing anything like that, you have to make sure that you get this flush. Because if you don't, when you stick your tubes or when you stick your um, plugs in, it can, it can cause little air spaces and then the air gets trapped around it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim this just like this. Cut that end off. So this is nice and tight. And then I just roll the edges a little bit like that to get it tight. Now this is ready to go into the mold. So what do we do at this point? I have, I have my mold here. This is my dog bone mold. Looks like a dog bone. Woof, woof, I know. Um, so I have this one ready. Now I sprayed these because Alumalite and HDPE, and that's what this is, this is this product. Now you can get pink molds and blue molds and all that other stuff that are silicone and use it kind of the same way. <laughs> I used to sell those and, and I like them, but they wear out. They wear out too quickly. Um, the HDPE is not going to wear out on you. So what I did is I just sprayed this a little bit with a little bit of mold release. I'm going to push this in here like that. Push this in here. You don't have to wait this. This is nice. Now I'm going to take that. I'm going to push it right down. Get it nice and tight. Same thing with this one. I've already trimmed the edges on that. Put it in here like this. Like that. Push this down. And so now this is ready. Now I can just pour my acrylic or pour the alumilite around it. If you were using polyester, okay, you don't need a mold release with the HDPE. When we're finished, you're just going to turn it up, stand down, smack the back a little bit, and they'll see, they'll pop right out. Okay? So now these are nice and tight, they're down slow. So I'm ready with this one. Okay? So I'm going to put this here for now. You want to make this. So I'm going to need 400 for this. So if I just use 200 and 200 and pour this stuff in it, it's going to be too much. Okay? It's almost a guessing game. How much is this stuff you're going to put in there? Or how much it's going to take out? So I figure instead of, you know, 400, maybe 300. Okay? So we'll do 300. How's that? And that way I can pour a little bit in here too and take care of that. And the rest will just pour in here. Okay? So 300. So I'm going to need 150 each. You can. You can do that too. Um, but it's, it, this is kind of, it's going to be a different, um, yeah, basically. All right. So I, I wasn't good with physics and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, okay. All right. If you use water, right. But the specific gravity of this stuff is a little different. And that's why you can't use... Um, if you try to mix them by ounces, it's, they're going to be way off. All right, so I'm going to zero this out. I'm going to put this big cup on. I'm going to zero that out too. All right, so what do we say we're going to use? 150. Okay, so on this one, okay, if you look at this, this one, one's just a little heavier than the other one, okay? So um, with this, the A was thicker on this. On this one, the B is thicker. So I'm going to put the B in first. And so I've got 100 and 11. 
the way it's it's the, no, 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 the specific gravity is different of one than the other. One is point one point oh six eight, and the other one is one point something. So it's a little different. So I've got a hundred and let's go one hundred and sixty just for place safe. Okay, one fifty nine one. Ooh, perfect. One sixty point one. Okay. Now since I've got seven and a half minutes with this. I'm going to mix this one in with this right away. Okay, so I've got 160.1. So I'm going to put 160.1 in this, hopefully. <laughs> Sometimes you put a little bit more in and then you have to play catch up. So we're at 140, 150, 158, 159, 160, 160.1. I couldn't have done it any better. Yay, okay, so now I'm gonna mix this up. Now, as I mix this, you want to, when you, when you mix these things, you want to mix them so that you don't see any, um, any differences in it. You want it nice and clear. So you can see that it's starting to turn clear right now. Okay, can somebody give me a time on this one too, please? Thank you. All right, so, okay, uh, we'll play with that for a little bit, a little bit too. All right, so, all right, I'm going to stop. And I can still see some striations in this, so I want to make sure I'm going all around the sides, make sure I get this nice and, and mixed up. Thank you. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour a little bit because this is clear. I'm going to pour it in my mold here. And if I'm not really worried about bubbles on this because um, they're going to surface, they're going to come right to the top. All right, so now the rest of this, I'm going to add a little bit of blue, just a drop or two on this one. I don't have to go crazy on it. That's good. I know. It's like a nice blue now. I've got this mixed up. Two minutes. Thank you. Now we'll start putting this stuff in. Now I do the same thing with seashells. Um, we do the same thing with the coffee beans, all kinds of different stuff. I use the, I believe, we use the, um, the Illumilite white for the coffee beans because it's a little bit uh, more forgiving and it holds the beans in better than, um, than this does. Okay. When you use the Illumilite clear, what's going to happen too is you have to color the tubes or you color your, um, the inside of the blank because if you don't you're going to see through it because it's really there's no this is pretty clear Three. thank you use a little bit more really scientific you see this that's it that's me Okay, so that looks nice and thick. Mixed up, yum, yeah, yum. That's pretty good measurement, not bad.
Well, we did it once before. Just once. How deep is that thing? Um, they're about an inch. Oh, okay, so you're fine for a bed Oh, yeah, I'm definitely, yeah. Thank you. Okay, put this aside. Put this in here. Now, if you see any bubbles or if you, you're afraid of any bubbles or anything, you can always take a little stick and just kind of tease around it to make sure there's no air bubbles sticking to anything. Okay. I'll take that, put it in here. Slide that in the back. I've got... Now, I, again, I've got little zeros and ones up here to make sure that I get them in the right spot because that, that hasn't leaked. So we'll get this in the pot. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Oops. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to put this back up to about 40 PSI. Okay. All right. What's the demold on that? Demold on this is about um, 45 minutes. Okay. So, let's see. We've got this over here. Now, this one, the one we're going to demold in a minute, is the one, hopefully, that's going to come out white, blue, and gray like this. Sorry, Ray. <laughs> um, and so this is the one I'm going to turn now. So I'm going to take these bushings off. I've got, I've got all my bushings and everything stuck to a magnetic tray over here, so it won't go anywhere. Let me get the bushings for that. Okay. I'm doing uh, now. How many here are Yankee fans? Yankee colors. Okay. The reason that I'm doing this rather than Philadelphia colors <laughs> is because when I do the. Um, the show in New York that I do, I've made, I'm using the PSI baseball um, kit. I'll use the colors for this. And what I've done is I've taken the box, uh, the cherry boxes, and I engraved Yankees on the outside with a baseball, okay? I'm not infringing on any logo because I don't have the Yankees logo or anything on there. I just say Yankees so I can get away with that. Um, so that's what, that's what we're doing this year for hopefully if I get in um, to get that. So I'm going to tighten this up. Oh, you told me about Grand, Central. Grand Central Station, yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have Yankees. I'm sorry. <laughs> especially, after two, especially after 2009. Come on. Uh, it was a terrible series. <laughs> all right, now, I use all small tool rests. Thank you, Norm. Um, because I want to get close to my work. Okay, and I'm going to start off, I'm going to use a regular roughing gouge on this. I've got this set at about the center height, okay, which is right about there. And so let me start off with the slow. Crank it up a little bit. These are safety glasses. They don't wrap all the way around, but I've really never had an issue with... My speed right about now is about 2200. Now, this is a Lumalite white, and you're going to, boy, it's a different, different rest. Um, this is, I usually keep my finger, I don't know how to do it this way. I keep my thumb right here, okay, all the time, because what happens is the pieces will hit my thumb rather than come up and smack me in the face. But, of course, you can't see what I'm doing, so I'm going to hold it back here, and I'm going to let this smack me in the face just because I'm a good guy, okay? 
What? Yeah, take him one for the team. And I've also, I have pre-squared um, this up. Now, I normally, well, all the time, what I do to square these up is I use a squaring jig like this. I don't use, I don't use these guys. The only time I use the parallel trimmers like this is when I'm doing a demo with somewhere that I don't have access to a disc sander in this. Um, but at home I do these and I've pre-done these so I don't have to worry about squaring them up if anybody was thinking about that. Okay, so once I start to get this round, now it'll come off in nice little ribbons just like that. And you hear that, that little squeak occasionally, okay? Um, you really can't, well, there's, it's not really doing what I wanted to do, um, putting little holes in it. You'll see the holes better in the, um, in the polyester one than this, because this is pretty benign stuff. This is really, really easy to turn. I mean, you see how nicely it's just coming off there. But it also drives you crazy, because it'll wrap it around. Okay, once I get that done, I'm going to switch over to a skew. I'm, I'm going to show you on the other ones. Okay, you'll see, you'll see the difference on it. I mean, you're getting really nice fine ribbons, long ribbons like this with this guy. Okay, and with, um, with a skew, I like to be at center with this. So if I rest this on here like this, I can lay my piece, I'm right about in the center, and all I do is just lift this up and come straight across. And yes, I know the point is facing down rather than up, okay? It does not make a difference, okay? As long as you are, your tool rest is set so that your skew is in the center of the work, which it is right there, and I can come straight across, nice and easy, just like that. Okay. Fuzzy stuff. And then come back. See, it's nice when you have a short tool. <laughs> I can still get in close with this. And I'm just taking little bits off at a time, coming down toward my bushings. This stuff off. Yeah, you're saying. Phew. At home, I have a nice vacuum system, so as soon as it starts to come off, it gets sucked right in. So you don't even really see this. And this is nice. Um, wait till we get to the polyester. It'll look like a snowstorm up here. Okay. So what I usually do is come down close to the bushings like this. Now, when I'm at home, I'll take this and I'll, now I'll go back and I'll square it up. Okay, I'll come back and I'll put it back on the lathe, and when I do, I will never get it back in the same spot. Okay, and since I didn't get it back in the same spot, if I turn this on, I can feel it jump just a tiny little bit. I'm on turning on a different center now. All right, so I'm going to lay this on here. I'm just going to lightly come in and just touch the end, just like that, and I'll take out that little bit of out of roundness in there. And shape-wise, I like that, well, in this pen, the heavy part is at the top, and it slims down to the bottom. So now that I've got my, my top piece, I'm going to just take this down to the bottom now. And sometimes it's hard to see because you get this stuff wrapped around it like that. I'm going to come in close to the bushing. And I usually take it right to the bushings first, and now I can clean up the rest of this, take out a little bit in the center here. Can you that exactly? 
I'm going just about, yeah, to the bushings. I'm, and again, at home, and I'm going to show you this when we do the other pens, I have um, test pieces for most of these. And in fact, you can, text, you can test any one of the pens, and I don't have the, I thought I brought the kit, but I don't have the kit with me here. Um, and I'll show you what I mean later on the, on the next one. Um, but this is going to be pretty close. So that's a decent shape for me. I like it a little bit top. I, I do a third, two thirds, where a third of it is up toward the top of the pen, which is I'm right handed, and then two thirds is running down toward the front. So um, this feels really good to me at this point. Okay. So if I turn this off, get the tool rest out of the way, you can see I've got tool marks in here. You see the see the scratches in there? Okay. Now. Effective material, right? Um, I take one piece of like maybe 400 or so and just lightly sand the tool marks out, and then we're going to wet sand this and finish it. So I've got one piece of like 400 or so. I don't care about the scratches it's going to put in there. Oh, my rag's up there. Okay. Get this, get my water. This is still Lumalite. This is a Lumalite white. Okay. This is a Lumalite white. This is soft. This is, I'm turning the softest one right now. Okay. Um, out of the three. So I'm just lightly just get my tool marks out of this. Yeah. I mean, now you see the deep scratches in there. Okay. So, see, I was considerate, Ray. I, I put a towel down the lathe. I didn't want to screw it up. Yeah. Okay. Now, a lot of you have um, the uh, micro mesh pads. There's like seven or eight of them in there. Those are not the right ones to, to sand um, acrylics. These are specifically designed for acrylics. They're double-sided. They're 600, 800, 15, 24, 4,000, and 12,000. I've got it dipped in water, just plain water. I guess it could be holy water because I got it from here. Okay, all right. Um, I'm going to start out. And I've still got this at about 2,200. And look at the slurry that you're, the slop that you're getting on there. Okay. I'm going to take my towel and just wipe that off, wipe this off, turn it over, go to the 800 side. Now, if you're not used to using these, I'll, I'll, I'll get it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I can bend over. I'm not that old yet. Yeah, I know. Norm always picks on me, so that's okay. All right, so if you're not used to using these, take a second, stop the lathe, you know, my, when I do demos at the wood, I have a hood piece up here, so I don't ever worry about all this, but obviously. All right, so if you're not used to using these, now I can still see some scratches in there, so if I want, I can go back and I can lightly sand them to try and get them out. But, I mean, I can get these out with the next grid anyway. But if, I mean, if they were really, really, really deep and you were concerned about it, you could always wipe them out like that, okay? So now I'll go to the next one, which is 1,500. I, got, I, st I haven't done anything with the speed. I've still got it at about 20. It's 2,230. Okay. But to see the slurry on this? The slurry is not as thick as it was before. 
Okay, that's the blue stuff on there right now. Wipe this off, wipe that off. How long do the pads last? Glad you asked. Um, these are the same pads that I started with in January. I've done 13 woodworking shows, doing three demos a day. That's over 39 times that I've used these, okay? Plus, and Norm will tell you, he's probably still got the original one that he bought 10 years ago. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Wipe off this one. Go to the 4000 one. I'm sorry, what? No. No. You'll feel it. Now, they tell you, Illumilite will tell you to, you know, to let this cure for 24 hours and all that stuff. I've taken them right out and turned them 20 minutes later. Okay. So this is 4,000. Wipe this off. Scratch remover. A tiny bit. Dry spot on the towel. Excuse me? What'd you say? Let's see. Um, this one was from... No, this is, this is Marriott. This is the last one that I got from them. Okay. So, I'll try not to spill anything. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to buff this. Oh, did we ever get a knockout rod? Pete, do we have a knockout rod? So he was one of the pens. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it is creative thinking. All right. So while they're doing that, let's undo this one. This is the first one. Yes. I went through all six sides. It got moved. It got moved. Okay, so to get this off, take this, take the little plug out of the bottom, and you can. I didn't bring my little hammer to smack this, but what I'm going to do is take this. Take this, put it right back against it like that, and out it popped, okay? So there's your, there's your piece, okay? Well, I like that color on that now. The white, there's gray in there, and I'm going to pass this around so you can see it. You can still feel that it's pretty warm, okay? Um, so that's what that one looks like, and then what I do is I just cut it up, obviously, into blanks. And I cut it on a bandsaw. It's not, it's, you know, nothing spectacular. Just whip it on a bandsaw, and I'll get six blanks out of that. So um, if you look at it cost-wise, um, a kit like that is about um, $30, I believe, okay? And you can get two, as you can get 12 blanks out of it for, you know, 30 bucks. But you're there your own blanks which are really kind of nice. All right, so we're going to try this now. 
This will work. There you go. Thank you. Keep that handy. We need it. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to put the. Now, this is designed to polish acrylics, okay? And um, the one wheel with, that has the blue rouge on it is a cotton muslin wheel. This is a cotton flannel wheel. And again, I'm going to keep the speed at about, you know, 2200 or so. Put a, little bit of, put a little bit of rouge on it. Make sure I have some pressure from the tailstock. And now again, at home, I have a vacuum system because this stuff is, is crazy, okay? Um, at home, I have a vacuum system that's sucking all this out. I know, it's, it's going in my lungs and not anybody else's. I know. Thanks, Norm. Okay, so this one gets the rouge, this one gets no rouge. Now, if I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, rouge on, rouge off. Okay. Ah, come on, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, you joke with pepper. Okay, so the nice thing about this is it gets out all the minute scratches that you can't see with your naked eye. Once you start buffing, you'll never go back. Okay, so here's this one. Okay, and if you do see a scratch, you can always go back to one little spot and work on that spot. Okay, so I'm going to pass this around so you can see it. Thanks, Ray. Yes. After a good amount of use, those things can get pretty. Things get nasty, okay? And if you if you load up the wheel, take a piece of 80 grit sandpaper, rub right against it, and clean it right off, okay? Um, I'm going to put it through this. There. It's not coming off now. All right, so I'm ready. I'm ready for the for the super duper. You got a system now. Yep. Let me put this back here so I don't spill it. Ready? Yep, go for it. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so Tell what? Yeah, right. All right, so now in, in what, about a half an hour or less than that, 25 minutes or so, we can pull this one out, okay, and I can show you that. But in the meantime, this is what, where is it? Oh, here it is. This is one that we just did, or I did, Okay, this is one of the, um, the abalone shell ones, okay, and I'm going to make a, I'm going to make an, a, a Venetian out of this one, so I'm going to use the Venetian bushings on this, and, okay, so this is the big end, this is the small end. And you'll see the difference in how this turns. And also, I want to show you that with some of these kits, you can use the actual pieces to test it. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to I'm going to show. This is the back of the back of the pen. This is the front of the pen. And then we're even going to assemble it, so you can see what it looks like when it's finished. All right. Now, all right. So, what'd you do with the beater? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you 
You're lucky, Norm. This fits right in between exactly. Perfect. Yeah, I'll sign it for you. Okay, so again, I'm about dead center on this. 2200. I lied. 2400. Okay, lay this on here. Come in nice and easy on this. You see that this is what I mean by a light bite. Little tiny bits like this. Not jamming this thing in there. Now, if you look at it, you'll see right up here, do you see all those little tiny holes? Can you see that or no? Yes. Okay. That's what you're going to get with this type of alumilite versus the other one. Okay. And also, you're going to see the same thing. It's going to be a lot more dramatic on the, um, with the polyester resin. We're going to talk about the polyester in a minute. Now I'm taking a little bit deeper bite than I normally would because I want to try and get through this quickly. All right, bring this in a little bit, about as close as I can get it. And now, you see the difference in this, I'm going to get a lot more snow in here than I did on the other one. I'm sorry, what? I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. Yes. Get out of there. Okay, come back this direction. And so, I mean, my skew, I use this more than any other tool because it really is a great tool once you get used to using it. Okay. And it's, they're easy to sharpen once you get, you know, the hang of it as well. And um, I'm working on a small skew adapter because uh, normally all the skew adapters that they have are this long and it's kind of hard for a little tool to get in there. So I'm making a little one like this. I've made it already, but I can't find a fabricator that wants to actually, you know, fabricate it. They all tell you they will, but when you come down to it, they say, ah, it's too much work. I don't want to do that. Well, gee, I'm sorry I'm giving you work. Okay, so... I use both, okay? The carbide I use for antler, I use for um, really, really hard things, the seashells, things like that. But most of the time, honestly, I, I use my, my high-speed steel um, just as much because I, I do a lot with antler um, and it just really dulls the tools really, really quickly. So, all right, let me back this up a little bit. Get this stuff off. See, this is a lot more fuzzy <laughs> than the last one. All right, now, this is what I mean. This is the this is the front of the pen. This piece is going to get pressed into the front. Can you imagine the guy's job that all he is all day is to put these in his little bags? Okay. So here's the <laughs> so here's the front of the pen. I'm going to take this and just slide it in here, and I can take my trim ring and slide it up. And I can look and say, I'm pretty close there, okay? Your bushings wear out. So rather than keep buying new bushings and everything, use the same bushings, but then just use the, your, these as your test piece. So that's the back end, or the front end. Here's the back end. And they are a little different. I can put the, oh, I, I got a long way to go on there. I can see I'm real high on this, okay? Put that back there. Check the front again, make sure. The front looks pretty good. Put this back on. 
And if I feel the front, I'm just about there, but I can, I can actually feel a little lip, okay, on there. And if I would take it down to that, I'd probably be too low. Um, so that's why I used to use those test pieces to make sure that I'm going to be okay with that. Now again, when I put this back on, I'm going to get a little bit of jumpiness at first because it's a little bit at around. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, I've got this terrible shyness about me. I've got, I've got to get rid of that. Quick story. I had to do a demo. or I had to, I had to give it a talk to the nurses one time. 5,000 nurses. And I was nervous. Okay. We had all 5,000 of them out on the, the floor. So... I'm back backstage, and I said to the woman, I said, I could go to the bathroom. She said, okay. I run to the bathroom, come back out, do the whole talk, come back. She says, how'd I do? She said, you did great, except your fly was down. <laughs> said, okay. And she says, <laughs> especially it was a joke. And the thing about it was, um, she said, well, trust me, it's, not, it's nothing that they haven't seen before. I said, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> You're talking all these ICU nurses and and urology nurses. So, yep, been there, done that. All right, so I'm just finishing up just a little bit on this shape-wise. All right. And I'm going to test this one more time just to make sure that I'm just perfect because I charge a lot of money for my pens and I want to make sure they're perfect. And it doesn't take any time to do this. Put this on here, slide it up. That looks great. Okay. I'm using the actual pieces, John. This is the piece that I'm actually pushing. I, I will press this piece in here to make this pen. Okay. So I'm taking this. This is the trim ring. Okay. Oh, okay. So I'm just putting it in here like this, sliding it up, just like that. Oh, okay. So you. So now I know that it's perfect. All right, but you, you still have to press. Oh yeah, you have to. Yeah, okay. it doesn't. That's but this what I is, didn't understand because yeah. you had that. Okay, thank you. Now you say that one has a trim ring. What if it doesn't have a trim ring? Most of them do. They, I mean, these are your these are your more expensive pens, okay? That that are going to be a ballpoint or or a rollerball, and I'll show you how to make it either or. Oh, I apologize. It's my grandson. Should I come down tomorrow? Yes, you should come down tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Otherwise, he won't. Yes. Yeah, now you can get his phone number. And <laughs> 75 people sending him texts. <laughs> okay. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing. Now I'm going to, I'm going to, I have tool marks in there, okay? Not enough now because we've already done this and, I, and if, when you put it on here, you can see it's pretty much concentric all the way around. So it does, it, it looks pretty good there. So again, I'm just going to lightly sand this to get the tool marks out. This is 400. You can use 320, 220, whatever you feel comfortable with, okay? I wouldn't use 80, I mean, that's for sure. Um, you know, but you know, you got to get used to y your tools and what you're working with. Okay, so if I look at this, I'm I can pretty sure maybe I still have a tool mark there. Okay, it's gone. Put this on here. Put it back here. And speed-wise, I haven't changed it. I'm still at 2,400. Do you 
No. The only time I use a CA over acrylic is if I have a seashell or something like that. Okay, pine cone. Um, yeah, something that's going to be exposed. Okay, but something like these, this is an acrylic on the outside. I'm not going to, you're just wasting your time. I, I, you know, I'm not. Oh, I know. They do, they, they, they do it. It's just, you know, a CA is, um, is an acrylic. So you're putting an acrylic over acrylic. It just, to me, it doesn't make sense. But listen, everybody to each his own. If you feel good about it, then, you know, then do it. Um, I'll be the last person to, you know, to tell somebody not to do something if they feel comfortable with it. You know, I've seen, I've seen somebody, you know, completely go from, you know, start to finish using, you know, a, a gouge. Okay, never pick up a skew and never do anything else. And, you know, their pens look beautiful. So if that's what it is, that's what it is. You know, keep doing it. This just works for me, and I know it's, I have to make hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pens a year, and so this is the fastest, easiest way for me to do this and, you know, and get something that is consistently good. So, all right, we're at 4,000, 12,000. When you're dunking them, you're basically doing that, and then you're wiping them off anyway. Um, so it's pretty much, you know, doing that. And seriously, these have been used, like I said, since the beginning of January, and I'm still using them. I'm sorry, what? Yeah. No, they, well, they, they are in the corners. They're starting to. Okay. Now, I left... I left a couple scratches in here to show you something. This half is pretty scratched up, okay? When I buff this, where's my, where's my designated rod man? Okay, come on, let's go. Let's get, get. I'm ready. The repairman see the second time. The second time we do this, we'll have it Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No need to apologize. Laying down the job. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Look at that. Man, it's good. All right, let's put this guy in. I'm going to show you. I'm going to leave. I'm going to. I'm going to buff half of this just to show you. You know what the buffer can do to get at, to get scratches out. All right, so that one got the rouge, this one didn't get the rouge. And I have a 10x magnifying loop at home, plus the fact I've got a great light. If you look at this now, it looks really good, okay? You really can't even see the scratches in there. When you put light to it, you can, whoa, <laughs> you can see the scratches. And so that's why I always have a really bright light right here. And it works off this magnet that you can't even move this thing on, so it's a decent light. I just happen to have a couple, too. <laughs> At least one. One's already spoken for. All right, so, all right, I'm going to pass this around so you can take a look at it. Um, pass it around quick, because what I want to do is I want to put this together, um, show you how to do it, and then we'll take a break, okay? Let you get up and 50-50 and, and that kind of stuff, so... Um, what I want to do is put this together and show you that I make all of my pens a fountain pen first. Okay? I set it up to be a fountain pen. And I do that because invariably I go to these shows and people say, do you have any fountain pen? And I'm telling you, I'm getting more and more and more requests for fountain pens now. It's crazy. I don't know what the resurgence is, but I'm loving it. Okay? In fact, I'm doing a fountain pen show in, in North Carolina at the end of this month. Um, so, you know, the thing about it is I set these up, and here's the, I already pushed in 
the center band on this, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, when we get this back, okay, I'm going to put the, the, the back end and the front end on with the, the, um, with the nib section in it. I'll screw it together like it's going to be posted. And then what we'll do is we'll line up the clip with that because a, a fountain pen should, the clip should line up with the, um, with the nib, okay? And, um, yes? Now, on that bike, you're going to take, when you get it back, you're going to take the rest of the scratches out. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just, you just want to show us what you see. What with the buffer, what the buffer can do, okay? Because a lot of people don't use a buffer. Um, and it really ups your game. It really does. And I, it's not just because, you know, we have them, but it's, it's, it, it really works, okay? Um, and they work well, okay? Um, I have ink. I have ink. I, I get it from Franklin Christoph, okay, in bottles. So if you... Hi, I have, we have, I have, fi I have higher end nibs. All the nibs that I use are Jovo nibs, okay? I get them from Germany. Um, I have them engraved with my initials in them, okay? Um, if you want them without that, let me know, and I'll, I'll get some without the, you know, initials. Can you put my initials in? Okay, I can put your initials in them, yeah. But if you, want, if you want them initialed, if you want them anything like that, the minimum setup charge is 75 just for that, and then it's like, I think it's like $6 a, a nib, okay, to get it engraved. And I get, and it's done in Spain. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, but they're always saying that the PSI and the uh, Daycom nibs are an odd size as opposed to like a, a commercially available pen. Do you, do you they, find that they, they use, most of them will use a 5 millimeter and a 6 millimeter nib, okay? Um, all the other manufacturers, Sale or DuPont, Franklin Christoph, Franklin Christoph uses Jovo. Um, you know, but a lot of the companies will, will have their own nibs made, okay? And it's really not the nib, it's the feed underneath. The feed is slightly different, it's slightly wider, narrower, whatever, and that's what, that's what the problem is. You try and slip any other kind of nib on there, what's going to happen is it's not going to line up right. When you, I mean, the way that a nib works, it works, you know, with basically having the ink flow down the channel, okay? Now, when I get a nib, when I get a kit, I'll take a, um, a 15,000 shim and run it straight down the inside of the feed itself, okay? Um, so I tune the nib, yep. I tune the nib. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. Um, I have them back there. I should get, get a, do me a favor, grab a, um, a fountain pen. From a Venetian, anything. Yes? Anything and everything. People write with them all the time. I, 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 write, with it, I write with it at my desk all the time. And, yeah, but people collecting stuff, but, you know, they're collecting high-end, you know, um, you know, the Sailor, the, 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 the DuPonts, the, you know, the four or $5,000 pens. Thanks, Ray. Pelican, yep. Uh, it, it's... It's not, except for when I'm seeing more and more younger people come into my booth and say, hey, do you have, do you have, um, do you have fountain pens? All right, so here's a nib, okay? This is a Jovo nib, all right? So what I do is I unscrew this, I pull the nib apart. No, it, it comes apart. I pull the nib apart, I take this out. This is your nib feed, okay? Now I'll take the shim and I'll run it right down the center, okay, the first time, because these are made, you know, you can have dirt, you can have all kind of stuff in them. So I clean that up, then I take that same piece of 15 thousandths of the, the little metal and I put it right in the breather hole and run it right down the nib, and then I, it's almost like dental floss. <laughs> I floss the whole nib, top and bottom, okay? Then when you go to put these back together, there's a little channel in here. And if you just put it in and you can turn it and twist it and you can feel it, there's a little flat edge on it. It's better if you visualize it too. Okay, so there's the flat end there. There's the flat side there. So when I put this in, it slides all the way down inside and it comes out the bottom there. 
Now I can take my nib, slide it in here, and push it in. And what I'll do is I'll take a little loop like this and I'll look at it this way to make sure that the tines are lined up this way. Look at it this way so it's just barely touching because you have to have that touch so the ink will flow all the way through. All the way through. <laughs> okay. Then when I load this, okay, I'll take, if, if I have my own ink, I'll take the converter God, I hate these little bags. I'll take the ink and I'll just take it like this, stick it in the jar and this, you can see the, the, the piston suck it up. So it sucks it all the way up. I push it on here first and then I hold it and I just drip it like this. So I feel a big drip come out the bottom. Then I know all the air is out of this. That's the biggest thing. You get an air lock in there. It'll write for a minute because you've, you've loaded it up, but then it, and then it dries out immediately. And people will you know, they'll drive you crazy. It's skipping, it's skipping. Well, it's, it's that, okay? There's a whole thing that, you know, with, with fountain pens. It'll, you know, I can go on for hours, but um, anyway. So is that done yet? If you look at you, the nib and the feed, if you look at it from the side, the feed, you want just touching the underside of the nib. Okay? That way the ink flows all the way through. If it's not touching, then you're going to have a skippy, you're going to have a, a, you know, a piece that skips on you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I do the show at D.C. Yep. I do D.C. I do North Carolina. Um, those are the only two that I really do because all the others are during the time that we're doing the, um, the, fountain, the, the uh, woodworking shows. Okay. So I'm going to keep this nib out because I want to show you how they go together. As soon as it's back to me, we'll clean this up real quick and that way you can pop it together and then we'll take a break. <sighs> I'm trying. Is that the second one up? Okay, thank you. Now the one side looks beautiful. No, no, the, the back. Okay. Um, this is the bottom. That's the bottom of the blank. Okay. But when you cut them square, that part will be. You're going to see a little bit of it like this. Okay. It doesn't make a difference. It's still, the, the idea behind this is it, it's three colors it's blue, okay, white, and gray. That's the Yankee colors. And so, you know, when you put it with the baseball pen and you put it with the box, they could care less what it looks like. Oh, this? <laughs> the half done one? Okay, it's coming around. Yeah, what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> hey, when I was a kid growing up, late 50s, early 60s, it was all Yankees. It was, I mean, that's all you heard was Yankees, 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 Yankees. Yankees. Well, um, and then we'll put this thing together. I got one scratch here I can really see, so I'm going to get that out. This is it. Yeah, it's it. how long does it take? Two seconds. Pop it in, pop it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. That looks good. Like we got it. Good. Good. All right, so now here's the back of the pen, and here is my kit. Where's my kit? Did I put it up here? Right. Yeah, right here. <laughs> it's sitting on a lathe, sorry.
Here's the back now. So I have chamfered the edge on this as well. And what I do is I take a little chamfering tool like this. And I just knock off the sharp edge. I've already done this before. I do that so now this piece pretty much starts to slide in by itself and it centers it that way it's not going to crack the edge because you've done all this hard work on it you don't you don't want to crack it as it goes in all right so put this in this is a disassembly and assembly press which is really kind of nice so if you get a problem where if you get this in and you don't like it, you can always take it apart real easy, okay? Um, all right, so that's my back end now. The front end, what I'm gonna do is I have this one set up. So here's my nib. Here's your nib section, and that's going to get pushed in here like this. So I'm going to unscrew this guy. I'm going to push this in. Drop this back one. Now, here's the tricky one. Put this on. And now, so here's the top of the pen. This will post. So in other words, this is going to screw on the back like that. So what I want to do is now I want to take my cap and make sure that when I put this together, I take this, I'm going to line this up like this, so I know that when I take this off and on, it'll screw back in the same spot. So I'm going to just push this in a little bit and then test it. Get it almost to where it's going to be. So these take about a twist and a half. So I put it in like this, twist it around, okay, and so it's going to line up. So I'm going to go like this, twist it like that, and so now the nib lines up with this, okay. It's perfectly lined up. Don't fall, thank you. Tighten this all the way up. All right, so now I can put the cap on like this. And then when they want to take this and they want to put it on the back, they'll start it here, twist it around, okay? And if it goes the other way, you start it at the wrong spot. So now I can come back and I can twist it to where it's going to be, okay? So I start it there and come there and I moved it. <laughs> I moved it just slightly. And there, it's pretty straight now, okay? So that's it. This is going to start here, twist it and it lines up, okay? Now, the nice thing about this is I'm going to take this off and put my rollerball point on it. And so now it's a rollerball. And if somebody says, well, do you have it in a fountain pen? Sure. So now I can take this, screw it right on, and I know it'll line up every time because I set it up that way initially. So I always set them up first as a fountain pen, and then, and then you know, you do it as a rollerball. Okay, so let's take a break. Do your 50 50 thing and. I learned that yesterday. I learned that yesterday with the fountain pen. Put one together on that. Look at this. All right. I'm going to undo this. Show you what these look like. Everybody get a look at this. When I, um, when I sell this at, at shows, I would sell this for $225. Okay? Uh, actually, I didn't have a chance to look at it. There you go, Norm. You want it back? Yeah, I'd like that. All right, so here are these now. I'll bring them over here so you can see them. So here's the, the ones that we casted that were clear. Okay? And to get these out, again, I would normally have my little plastic hammer, which I forgot. Smack that guy. Now take these and just these pop right out. 
and I can take this guy if I need to and just lift it right out. Okay. Now, this, they tell you with a Lumalite to wait 24 hours to really let it harden up. And if you feel this, I'll pass this around. You can still feel it. It's just a tiny little bit soft. Okay. So I'll pass this one around that way and I'll pass this one around the other way. Okay. But this is how easy they come out. They just pop right out like that. And I can just lift this guy out. Okay. And there's the abalone shell one. That looks really pretty too. I'll pass this around from this side. Okay. And then the big kahuna. This guy, the credit card one. That really came out dark blue. So I'm going to take this. I took the little plug out of the bottom. Smack that. And I still have a little bit of pressure left in here. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that just pops right out. Yeah. When could you turn that one, the, the one here? This one? I've turned them, honestly, in like, like four or five hours. Okay. Um, so here's this guy. Oh, I like that color. That's really pretty. Okay. So um, you can see this one. We'll pass this brick around. And those, again, those all cut up. And um, I sell those for anywhere from 150, probably about 150 bucks, because they're so easy to make and it's just, it's quick and simple. And so, all right, let me take this out. And now, so the last thing I want to talk about is polyester acrylic. Okay. And the polyester acrylic, what did I do with the, oh, here it is. Polyester, you do not need a pressure pot at all, okay? Do not need a pressure pot whatsoever. The disadvantage to polyester is that it smells like fiberglass. Do you ever, ever smell fiberglass when it's cooking, okay? Um, honestly, I love that smell, okay? I grew up at a marina. I mean, I grew up in Margate, New Jersey, working at a marina. I'm underneath the boats, you know, and so this is like old home week to me, okay? So you don't need a pressure pot with this. All you need is everything that's in this kit. What you do is in here, you have a mold like this, okay? And you're gonna pour one ounce in a cup that's in here and mix it up, put six drops in there, mix it up, and then I pour it in this and I put it on a nice flat surface and let it dry, okay? The first time I did this, all right, I did it in the summertime about 20 years ago in my garage in August, okay, and um, doors are open, okay, and I'm, it's tired, it's late, I go to bed, I come out in the morning, and I have all these little critters stuck to the bottom, stuck in it, and they're all over the place, the wings and arms and legs and everything, and it was about the same time Jurassic Park was, so I thought, hmm, maybe I could do something with this, so I filled the rest of it all the way up and, you know, try to cut through it, and it didn't work out that well, so... Don't, don't try that. Just make sure that you cover it when you first do it. So the first layer, you're just going to put it in there and let it harden up by itself. Now, you're going to take your tube, whatever you want, okay, like what we did here with the pictures, or the, with the um, uh, abalone, or the, um, the cigar label, okay. Plug the ends. In here, you get weights. You're going to need the weights, okay. Um, I didn't do that the first time, and when I poured it in there, again, I filled it up, and everything's starting to float, and I'm trying to push it down, and it's hardening up, and it didn't work, okay? So put the little weights in there, and it keeps everything down. I pour it in three pours, in three layers, okay? That way, I can roll these back and forth, and especially when I'm doing the watch pieces, okay? When I'm doing pieces that have a lot of spaces that you can trap air in, okay? That's why I, I don't really use the, um, the dog bone for that, okay? Because you can trap a lot of air with these, especially with the watch parts. You can get all those little parts in there. Now, people say, well, how do you, how do you get the watch parts in there? And I say, yeah, you bend them. And you bend them carefully. And I'm not being facetious when I say that. You just take you know, two little pair of pliers, and I actually bend them. And then I lay them on the piece. I paint the background first, okay? 
and then I just lay them on, glue them on with medium CA glue, get them all glued on, then I put the, the plugs in them, put the weights in them, and I put them in there, and I pour it in three pours. Okay, and I pour it in three pours because the second pour, I'm rolling this back and forth, so that way any air that's trapped in it comes to the surface, breaks the surface, goes up, and it's no harm, no foul, they're gone. Okay, next day, come back, pour it again. Now somebody's gonna say, well, what about lines? Okay, I dare you to find a line in there, okay? You know, I sell these for 900 to $1,000, okay, this one, all right? You cannot find a line in there, all right? Once you, once you, you know, put it on the lathe, turn it, polish it, everything, it's gone. I don't care where the lines go, they're disappeared, okay? It doesn't make a difference to me, all right? So, and, you know, you can do a lot of different things. Now, with, if you're going to do things that have girth to them, and what I mean by girth, like the watch parts, things like that, you're going to need a fatter type of pen. So if you look at the difference between these two, this is a Sierra Vista. This is a Sierra. Okay, see how much thinner it is. This is just a cigar label. Okay, background is a tobacco leaf. All right, I put the tobacco leaf on first, then I glue the label on, and then I put it in the mold and pour my acrylic over it, over three, three pours. Okay, if you use fat things, use a Sierra Vista. They have a bigger bushing, okay? And so you're gonna get more girth to it than you would with something that's very slim like this. So it just depends on what you wanna do and what you, if you're gonna do pictures, labels like this, a Sierra works fine, okay? If you're gonna do fat things, then do a Sierra Vista, and that way it's, you know, it's fatter for you. Now, here is an example of that. This is, these are, the background is a, let me get the, the one that I've already done, it'll look a little nicer. Um, background is aluminum foil. These are made by Mick Lawrence in Australia. Mick is a master of this stuff, okay? Um, I do straight watch parts on plain backgrounds. He does them with all the fancy colors on this. This is called stained glass because it looks like stained glass. And he outlines it in, in, you know, in copper like this. He just made one for a, um, for a contest in Australia and he made little railroad tracks in there. <laughs> I mean, the guy's amazing what he does. He really is. Um, so this is polyester and he uses polyester because it's clearer, okay? And when he puts it in his mold, he doesn't have to worry about the bubbles because he can pour it that way and see where the bubbles are and scrape them right off, okay? So I'm gonna ha I have this one here. I'm gonna turn that and show you how it turns versus the other two that we've done already, okay? Let me put my plug back in here, otherwise I, won't, I will lose it, okay? So, um, I've tried that, okay, <laughs> you still, um, with, with all the little um, gears and everything, you can trap air, okay? So what I do, I guess you could put it in a pressure pot, okay? But what I do with the polyester, you have almost 35 or 40 minutes, okay? You've got about 35 or 40 minutes before it starts to harden up. So you do have some time that you can possibly tease off the bubbles as what you see and then put it in a pressure pot and then go from there. But I, I really don't have a problem letting it dry like that. Yes? You can, yeah, I mean, people use the vibrator and all that stuff. It's just, I, this, it really doesn't make a difference, okay, honestly. Um, I don't use a vibrator at all like that. I don't, I just, I put it in the pot, okay. <laughs> All right, could you please hit this out for me? Thank you. I appreciate that. Can you use epoxy? Epoxy? Okay, a two-part epoxy? Yeah, you can. Um, a problem, again, with the problem with the two-part epoxy is that, to me, um, it's not as clear, okay? Uh, this polyester is optically the clearest, okay? It's absolutely perfectly glass clear, okay? And that's why I use that. Um, because I know, you know, I, you know, I'm spending or I'm 
you know, selling these for a lot of money, I want to make sure that they're right. Where did I put, the, oh, here's the other bushings over here. Um, so, here's, we did the bottom half. I'm sorry, what? You find it to be clearer than CA? Well, I mean, CA is an epoxy. I mean, or is, is an epoxy resin, so. Um, because I've had problems with air bubbles with that, honestly. Um, and, you know, I just, I think that the polyester, if you're going to use, the liquid diamonds works if you want to, you know, use a pressure pot with it, okay? I'm not using a pressure pot with my, because you spend six hours gluing all those little pieces on, okay? What's another day to me to roll that back and forth? And if you look at the watch parts that I do, I put the dials on, okay, and the hands on. A lot of people don't put hands on because they pop through, okay? Um, I don't have an issue with that. I mean, I was the first one to do that, so I'm kind of used to, to, you know, to how, how you do it, okay? So I don't have, like I said, I don't have an issue with that, so that's why I just use the polyester for this stuff, okay? So let's get this in here. All right, who's got my, there's the, all right. Um, it's, it's six drops per ounce. I use it for all three pores, honestly. I don't, I don't, I mean, you know, they, they tell you to, to on temperature to drop it down a little bit and everything else. The only thing temperature affects it is it makes it a little more brittle, okay? Now, remember how the strands came off of that other one, okay? When I first turn this on and when I do this, and again, I'm gonna keep the same speed at about 2200, 2400 in that range. Okay? When I do this one, I gotta come up a little bit. Okay. And I'm taking a really light bite on these because, first of all, this blank is very expensive. How expensive is it? Okay. These are $100 for the pair. But I also sell this pen for $500. So I'm going to show you this, and you're going to see the little holes in it. Now look at the holes. You see the little tiny holes up there all the way through it, okay? Um, but again, I'm taking my time with this, going very easy. Because if I put a hole in this, it's on me. And I have these on my website, and I tell people, these are not for the faint of heart. <laughs> so if you blow it up, I'm sorry, it's on you. I try and, and convince people not to buy them, but they are so beautiful when they're done, they just, they have to do it, so you just have to take your time with it. So once this is round, and again, I've got little holes in it. I'm going to take this thing and... <laughs> Sorry, forgot about that. Any of, the, any of the polyesters, okay, are going to be the hardest to turn. And by polyester, you're talking about inlays, okay? Um, any of those, you're going to have an issue because of... Um, just the, it's the polyester. And also, look at the fuzzies coming off of this thing now. Versus the others that we had. But when this is done, it is, it is perfectly clear. That's why I use it for my, for my watch parts. That's why I use it for the, um, for the uh, cigar labels. I use it for my um, circuit boards. Now, if you look at this now, just by using the skew, I've cleaned up all those little holes on this side, and now I'll go back and I'll clean them up on the other side. Uh, 
nice and easy. That rattling is because this isn't tight on the back side. And you can use, if your tool is really sharp, you can use it like a scraper like I'm doing now and reduce this kind of quickly it's just as well. Okay. Um, it just depends on how you want to use this, how you want to use the skew. And again, I have the, the toe down. It doesn't make a difference because again, I'm still in the center of the work. And I'm just taking my time going back and forth. And I want to get down close to the bushings, then I'll take it off and I'm going to test it again. I told you, it's like a snowstorm, this one. But at home, I have a nice vacuum system that sucks all of this stuff right out. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, the carbide, if the, you're, you're not really supposed to use carbide on polyester, okay? The only, the only carbide that you should be using on polyester is a negative rake scraper, okay? Where the and this is, I mean, if you look at this, what I'm, what I'm doing now, it's almost like a negative rake scraper, okay? Um, your negative rake scraping, I should say. But um, with, a, with the um, carbide, you know, you should use the negative rake on this, and, you know, it will work. Okay, but still, I get very nervous about that because people, unless you have an extremely light touch, you can chip these out so quickly. And, you know, and some of these are really expensive, it's not worth it. Um, the <laughs> biggest gripe I get all the time with people uh, you're turning acrylics is that they, they chip it. They say it chips too easily. And I tell them the definition of a light bite is different. Mine is going to be different than yours. You see how, how tender I am with this. Okay. So now, this is my center band, okay? Now, what I've done with this is I've sanded all of this off. I've sanded all of that off. Thank you. Thank you. I've sanded all of this off, okay? So I can take this now and slide it in here like this. All right, and I can slide it in and see, oh, I'm just, I'm perfect on this now, okay? That's good on this side. Turn it around. That's good on this side. All right. So, um, I, no, I'm not a big caliper guy. Yeah. Um, it just to me it takes too long. This is a lot easier. Yeah. We all make mistakes. Okay. Sorry, I don't mean to insult the audience. Um, I make mistakes. You guys don't. So rather than throw your mistake out or throw it against the wall, okay, take it apart and sand off this piece. So now. If you're making a lot of the same pens, it just makes sense because the bushings wear out. So if my bushings start to wear out, you know, and if I'm trying to take this down to it, I can just use this real quick and test it, and I know it's going to work. Okay. And yes, you can do that. Medium CA, and what you do is spray it first a little bit, and when you spray with CA glue or with an accelerator, is Just give it a quick little squirt like this, okay? And let it, and then just go in and just give it a tiny drip and let it harden by itself. If you spray it again, what it's going to do is cause heat and it'll give you a bubble there, okay? The other thing is don't spray it like you're pissed at it, okay? Like that, because that's going to burn it too, okay? So, you know, don't do it. Just hit it real lightly like that and you'll be fine, okay? So I'm going to put this back on, which I did. When I turn this back on, I can feel it bump just slightly. Okay, so I'm going to take this and just lightly just do that on the end and do that on this end. Okay, and the shape on it is good. Okay, um, I might take it down a little bit, but you know I'm going to blow it up, so I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> Because uh, it's at that, and it happens to everybody. Okay, so at this point, let's take a peek at it. I've got some 
I've got some um, tool marks in there, so I can take my I can take my one piece like this, my little 400, and just lightly sand this. Okay, and now I'll wet sand this guy out behind me. Thank you, Ray, for reminding me. Okay, and so all of this, all of the acrylics, doesn't make a difference what kind, what it is, will polish the same way using these pads and then buffing it. And I apologize for not bringing the buffing systems. And please don't tell my wife, please, because she would, she's. Last thing she said to me, don't forget the buffing systems. I said, I won't, honey. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Ray. Now, the other thing, too, is you don't have to start with the, the yellow side, which is 600. You can start with the green side if you want. If you know this is pretty smooth to begin with and the scratches aren't that deep, you can shortcut it here and there, okay? and just do one rather than the other. But look at how that's starting to shine up just, just by those two. Wipe this off, Let's go to the next one. So polyester is the most brittle, okay? And the more you, if you, if you add, you know, instead of you know, six drops per ounce, you put eight drops per ounce in. What's gonna happen is it's gonna generate more heat Okay, and what it's going to do is it's going to make it more brittle when you go to turn it. Okay, the other thing is sometimes, and I can't tell you why, sometimes polyester acrylic doesn't dry right away. Okay, it takes a little bit. So now, I just told you about heat. I turn a toaster oven on to about 110 degrees. Okay, and I put it in there for about 10 minutes. I unplug it and put it in there, and as it cools down, it hardens right up, okay? My students, when I teach at Mark Adams, okay, out in Indianapolis, there are week-long classes. Um, what they'll do, and I don't recommend it, is they'll pour it, and they'll put it out in the sun, okay? Four hours later, it's done, okay? And I mean, it's done. And I mean, it is really, really brittle at that point, and I tell them that, and they don't care because they want to get it done quickly. And some will blow up and some will be perfect. It just depends on their skill level at that point. And I tell them that, okay, let me get my designated rod man here. That's right, I think I can, I think I can get it this time. Let's see. Hey, huh? man, I'm telling you, I learned quick. Thank you. So it didn't take that long to change. So that's why I do that. And then the other thing that flips, whenever I do stuff for the AEW and I have a towel on there, oh, they get, they get so annoyed at me. Don't put that towel on that lathe. It's going to wrap up and catch. I said, yeah, so? Just turn it off. It's only going to go flop, 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 flop. They got so annoyed with me on year. You can't do that. I said, you want, you want water all over your lathe? Use a paper towel. Doesn't work as well. Okay. Well, that looks good. And again, I have a loop at home that I check this out with um, to make sure that I don't because the first, the first fountain pen show I went to in DC, and this is going back 20 years or so, I went there and a guy picks up one of my pens and he's got a little loop around his neck. He looks at it like this, politely smiles, puts it down and walks away. I said, excuse me, I'm new, what did you just do? He said, I'm looking at scratches. I said, there aren't any scratches like this. He says, no, not like this, but here, look at it this way. And I could see little swirl marks. And he says, I'm not paying $200 for a pen that has swirl marks. I said, fine, I understand guy next to me was from Bexley Pen Company. They're the world's largest OEM manufacturer of plastic pens. And so he said, let me show you how to do it. So he's got plastic 
the reason I'm doing this is I have um, acrylic on my finger and it's sticky. Um, he said he's, they've got big eight inch wheels just like this. Now these wheels are not like regular wheels wheels. This is a cotton muslin. Every other strand on this is cotton and muslin. Every other strand on this is cotton and flannel. The blue rouge is finer than white diamond by two steps. If you look at the Beale buffing system, this is, the Beale buffing system is great. I use it, I sell it, it works great for wood. This is designed for acrylics, okay? Gets all the minute scratches out and you're ready to go. All right, so now we're ready to assemble this puppy, okay? So here's the, here's this kit. This is, the, this is the Arcadia, okay? It's a little bit upscale from what we just put together, which was the other one, and it, the difference is, and I was gonna show you, is on the, 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 the back end, okay? And really it's on the center band. The center band has a nice little raised, like uh, they, they almost look like maple leaves, okay? So, with this guy, I'm gonna put my center band in, where's my, oh here it is, my center band, I'm going to put this in and I'll press it and we're going to do the same thing, where's the other pen so I can take the, the nib off of it? The table behind you. Ah, Norm. Okay, all right so that's pressed in. So now, here's this one. We'll take the nib off of this. I'll put it down here because I know that I'll drop it and scratch it. So now you can do it this way. Screw this on here like this. Take the top portion and do the same thing. Line this up. That's close there. Most of the nibs, most of the nibs and thread stops in the same place. Then. They are, on this particular style, these are, these are all the Deacom kits. They're the upscale kits. Okay. Um, I get them directly from Deacom, so I'm going to put this in here, turn it this way. Okay, two and a half turns. Let's get it there. Okay, perfect. Lines up just like that. This kit is thirty dollars, okay, as a um, as a rollerball. It's like thirty six for the fountain pen, okay. But the nice thing with these, as I said before, now this is set up for a fountain pen. Take this off. And now I'll make it into a rollerball. Okay. So there's your rollerball. Pass that around. And that one goes for 500. That particular pen is for, I sell that for 495. Yep. Um, and again, if somebody if somebody wants it as it comes as a rollerball, if they want it as a fountain pen, I usually charge them $50 to, to make it into a fountain pen. Now, what I do is, when I do these, when I do shows like this, I'll take an extra kit with the nib on it, okay? The kit's 25 bucks, okay? I'm charging them $50 to make it into a fountain pen. They think they're getting a deal, okay? And I've made my cost up plus. So, that's what I usually do with those. And all of these particular pens, I do offer them as a fountain pen or a rollerball. And you can get just you can just buy the nib for thirteen bucks, okay, and make it yourself. So, one thing, and I forgot to mention that before, is when you paint the tubes, okay, when you paint tubes and when you glue them in. Okay, they can. Sorry, too loud. When you paint a tube, um, do not use CA glue to glue this back in. CA glue will attack the. Um, will attack the glue and make it come off. Paint. All right, the paint, right, it'll make the paint come off and it'll be glotchy and on inside, especially when you do the ones that were the clear like this. Even though this is dark blue, when you get down to it, it's, it's translucent, you can see through it. 
So if you don't have a blue background or something, you'll see the, the, the brass tube shining through. Um, so, I'm sorry, what? Five-minute epoxy, okay? Two-part epoxy, part A, part B. The nice thing about this, too, is um, that it's, it's a little bit gap-filling, so it'll fill in the gaps a little bit. Okay. Um, the downside of that is that it takes 15 minutes before you can really do anything with it. Five minutes and it sets. Okay. 15 to 30 minutes before you can really turn it. Okay. Um, when I do my demonstrations, I do it all with, with CA glue because I need to get done quickly. Okay. Yes. Right. I'm putting a drop of medium CA on it, just a tiny little drop, just to hold it in place. That's all. It's not going to run. It's not. You're not when you when you put it inside the tube, Larry. You're you're twisting it and turning it like that, and you're just scraping it off, basically. It's just attacking it. It just makes it come right off. So, um, all right. That's I mean basically the the whole thing with with casting. Okay. Um, you can create your own pen blanks and make them unique. When I do pen shows and there's other pen people there. I get, people, I get comments all the time. People come in the booth saying, boy, this is nothing like I've ever seen before because I'm not just making a wooden pen, okay? You're doing things like this. You're doing the watch parts. You're doing pictures, you know, cigar labels, you know, um, credit cards. Anything, I do scalpel blades. I do, you know, weird things like that. I have Botox pens. Um, this, is, this is a Botox, the top of a Botox can or a little little you know little label. Um, I do anesthesia pens, okay, where we take the Narcan and put the Narcan in there. I mean, you know, yeah, we going to carry one of those. We do all kinds of things like that, okay. Um, these are the these are the, the surgical knives, okay. I, I worked in the OR for years, so I used to get a lot of this stuff. Um, it's just fun. You want to do something different? Make a cigar pen like this. Okay, I guarantee you nobody's going to have one of these there. Okay, and it unscrews like that. I take this one, this is a, a Patron. Okay, I get a Patron box, I make a little insert for it, set it in the box, 325. Okay, and people buy them because, you know, if there's the, the cigar is 50 bucks. Okay, <laughs> they could care less. You know, it's like taking a $50 bill and smoking a $50 pill. I mean, it's crazy. Yes, Norm? When you're, uh, when you're printing a, a, a picture or something to put on a, uh, on a tube, we're going to create using the, uh, the dog bone. Right. Uh, you're going to use an, eight, you're gonna use a, a, an inkjet printer. Do not, do not use laser jet. Okay? The resin will get, gets attacked, uh, or the ink gets attacked by the resin, and it floats off. Um, it just makes it kind of a funny looking thing. So, I tried, trust me. <laughs> okay, so, um, it's just, this is, I had somebody buy one of these in New York. He puts it in his pocket and he was a magician. He comes back to me the next day and I'm just sitting there and I'm looking at him and his pocket's smoking. Okay, and I said, how'd you do that? And he says, I'm a magician. I said, yes, you are. He had a little cigar about this big that it had a pocket he had another little thing, and, and it, it smoked. And so that's what this thing was smoking. So it was kind of cool. But you made that pen. What do you sell that pen for? That, well, just if I take this by itself, it's like two seventy-five. I put it in the box, okay, with that it came from. We sell them for three twenty-five. And with the smoker, you sold it. For no, I didn't. I didn't have the smoker. I'm, I'm, try, I'm still trying to find out where he got that. He get it. Get it from a magic store somewhere. So. Um, all right, any other questions about anything? I know it's running late, I'm sorry. Um, okay, anything else at all? I'm here, okay. Listen, thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you.